your think tank focuses on disruptive innovations with the advancement in technology how do you think the new age digital learning can be improved and made more effective yeah well i think you already started to hear glimmers of it which is that this notion that online learning has to be video and with a very high speed internet connection and, and internet uh, on on the laptop and so forth that's going to be increasingly an antiquated notion i think what we're seeing is that smartphone applications for learning have gotten immeasurably better over the last couple of years that operate at much lower bandwidths. They create very active learning experiences, which research shows is critical for good learning, where the student is actively participating, answering questions constantly, not passively sitting back. And so we've seen some dramatic advancements uh, in the state of the art, just from very simple mobile applications that are demonstrably better at teaching everything from business education to language learning uh, to the fundamentals of math and, and, and reading and science. And so that's really, I think, where the trajectory is going to much better designed experiences on the mobile phone right now. Right. Jitain, let me also come to you. At the same time, in countries like India, access to remote learning is becoming a huge roadblock, something you just mentioned in the beginning as well. Do share the challenges of digital learning. I think, look, it is like this. The first challenge is that uh, what about half of India's uh, you know, society in rural areas which do not even have a computer or a smartphone? Mm -hmm. Are you going to deny them those children a right to education? Mm -hmm. And just, I mean, it's very fancy to talk about in urban cities about online education, digital schooling and stuff, and you know, Zoom calls, Zoom classes. What about villages? Are we going to turn a blind eye? They are still dependent on those you know, educational channels of All India Radio and Doordarshan. Probably there lies a way for the mass education in the villages. But then you know, there, is, there are other challenges. You see, I am a technologist. So I am all for technology. But you know, in the last six months, my heart as a businessman is a is complete is that complete contradiction with my my you know uh, my thinking, my uh, what I perceive and what I am seeing. You know, I'll tell you what. Uh, when you bring a child on a Zoom school, I mean, there are people who said that companies like Sony, which ran massive campaigns, that how PlayStation will replace playgrounds. It did. But then what is the effect on children? Today, children are not going for physical activities. Everybody wants video games and YouTube videos. And then you have to have these de-addiction classes of, you know, then have some sort of special courses to send children for physical activity. Now, you know, you are telling, it's, it's, it's good to have digital blackboards in schools. But if you tell children that you have to buy iPads and laptops for homework and classes, you know, it is not the divide you're creating, but you are ensuring that they forget how to write. I mean, I am seeing a you know, generation of children today who do not have a good handwriting. They know how to type, but they don't know how to write. And very soon then now Google is introducing autocorrect and you know, all those things. People are learning to forget uh, write correct spellings. So remember, we are not training machines. We are not creating robots. You are here to you know, educate children and create good human beings for tomorrow, and that can never happen online. Uh, and last point I want to make, you see, it's not about children. I mean, today every small child has to be accompanied by a grandmother or a mom when she or he she, uh, mm -hmm. or she is attending online class. There are risks of accidental exposures. Our society do not have great digital hygiene or cyber education. Mm -hmm. They are falling prey to online bullying. They are falling prey to online frauds. They are falling, chill. I mean, there are p uh, teachers who are complaining that I've been bullied in my class by unknown students. So there are all sort of problems we are facing. So I think because of pandemic, we must yes, we must do our best to provide whatever support to the students in the online mode. But it can right. it can never be a reason for online education to stay forever in a permanent mode. Right, Jitin, those are some very very concrete challenges that you have actually just mentioned. Let me also bring in Michael. Michael, do you think that there are certain solutions that could be perhaps worked upon? I do think that there are. We've seen that actually online education for some students in the United States has been a very suitable and in fact better alternative in certain circumstances. I think that there have to be a certain set of things though that are in place. The first one is for those that do not have access uh, to the digital tools that were just mentioned, you know, the governments or schools must provide what is uh, the adequate uh, necessary set of resources. And that might be internet connectivity, that might be devices, that might be clever solutions that power on solar uh, and the like, but you need to be able to provide that baseline. The second is that you need to have a clear culture around digital citizenship and digital literacy. And you need to be able to say 
these are the norms of what it means to be in online learning. It cannot be your entire schooling experience. You need to get physical activity. You right. need to get offline. You need moderation. And then the third thing is you need your family uh, if you're going to be doing this fully remote, which is, again, not what I typically recommend. But if you're going to go that route, your family is all of a sudden a co-educator in this process. And uh, you need to make sure that it's very clear what their level of involvement and the expectations are and clarify that up front, because otherwise it's very, very challenging to do this well. That's a very relevant point, uh, Michael. On that note, let me bring in Amita. Amita, you just heard what uh, Michael had to say. He's saying that the family has to play the role of co-educators. On that note, the hours long digital classes are also posing some serious challenges for working parents, you see, especially for the ones with primary school kids, especially now with offices reopening. It may not be possible for parents to juggle between work and children's classes. How are schools planning to address this problem? You know, before I talk about that, I think the most important thing we should talk about is that there are so many issues that are coming up with health, uh, with the online issue, because all the time the emotional, uh, the physical and the mental areas are being affected in very big ways, because the emotional compass, especially of young children and adolescents, have not been created yet. And as a result of which there's a lot of angst, there's a lot of irritability, mood swings, self-harm, abuse that is going on. And parents have become at the center of this because there are also abuse going on with children because parents have not been used to having children living with them on a 24-7 basis. And it's been a very different society. Right. And again, when I just want to make a couple of more points. And what I would like to say here is that women, per se, are facing a lot of hardships because it is them who have to then stay back. It is they who have to then lose out on, 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 say, a particular job or take a sabbatical because somebody or the other has to be there to ensure if children, younger children are going online. And in poorer areas, the parents can't cope in any case. They can't even, they, they take away the smartphone and go off and the child is left unless there is some helpline that works with the child later in the evening through the school. So there are compounded problems of, the, of how parents are going to come into this whole space. So we have to look at that very carefully because parents also need help. And they cannot, because they also have a living to do, people have lost their jobs. They suddenly can't sit at home and start looking at online learning for their children. Mm. So in this context, schools really have to work around these challenges. And as of now, these are really big challenges. And women are the ones who are going to really take that hit, mothers of the family and so on. Yeah. I'm a mother, Amita, and I know exactly what you are just talking about. Uh, Michael, let me come to you. Can online learning platforms encompass free-flowing conversations, debates, and practical applications like lab experiments? Don't they lose flavor when done online? Look, there are differences and there are trade-offs and everything. But what I will tell you is that there's some amazing platforms out there. Minerva Project, for example, offers one in concert, actually, with a rural uh, university in India right now, where it uh, literally facilitates the most robust conversations you've ever seen. They are far better than any college seminar any of us sat through with incredible active learning and everyone participating. And so we've seen that free flowing conversation be replicated, but actually I would say improved in the online environment. The second example to answer around science is that there are some very interesting companies like Labster and other environments that allow you to have virtual lab experiments. And no, it doesn't allow you to actually smell the gas from uh, the experiment you're doing or something like that. But you're also able to do a bunch of experiments you would never otherwise be able to do. And it's better than the alternative, nothing at all. You know, you can do an experiment now where you dump a bunch of methane gas into the atmosphere and see what happens uh, to the environment. It's not something I would recommend doing in person or re in reality, but it's incredible actually the virtual labs that are popping up online that allow you to do real inquiry and scientific thought.